I will look after my sheep, says the Lord. I will appoint a shepherd to pasture them, and I, the Lord, will be their God. In nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti, Gracia Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Caritas Dei, Communicatio Sancti Spiritus, sit cum omnibus vobis. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Oremus. O oh God, who made the Bishop St. Paulinus of Nola, standing for love of poverty and pastoral care, graciously grant that as we celebrate his merits, we may imitate a, an example of his charity through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. The high priest Hilkiah informed the scribe Saphon, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. Hilkiah gave the book to Saphon, who read it, and then the scribe Saphon went to the king and reported, Your servants have smelted down the metals available in the temple and have consigned them to the master workmen in the temple of the Lord. The scribe Saphon also informed the king that the priest Hilkiah had given him a book and then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the contents of the book of the law, he tore his garments and issued this command to Hilkiah the priest, Ahakam, son of Saphon, Abor, son of Micaiah, and the scribe Saphon, and the king's servant Asa. Asahiah, go consult the Lord for me, for the people, for all Judah, about the stipulations of this book that have been found, for the anger of the Lord has been set furiously ablaze against us, because our fathers did not obey the stipulations of this book, nor fulfill our written obligations. The king then had all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem summoned together before him. The king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, priests, prophets, and all the people, small and great. He had the entire contents of the book of the covenant that had been found in the temple of the Lord read out to them. Standing by the column, the king made a covenant before the Lord that he would follow him and observe his ordinances, statutes, and decrees with their whole hearts and souls, thus reviving the terms of the covenant which were written in this book. And all the people stood as participants in the covenant. Verbum Domini. Teach me the ways of your decrees, O Lord. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes that I may exactly observe them. Give me discernment that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commands, for in it I delight. Climb my heart to your decrees, not to gain. Turn away my eyes from seeing what is vain. By your way, give me life. Behold, I long for your precepts and your justice. Give me life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus Vibiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii, Segunda Matteo. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. By their fruit you will know them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Just so every good tree bears good fruit and a rotten tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a rotten tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So by their fruit, fruit you will know them. Verbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we approach the end of the Sermon on the Mount, we're warned about false prophets, right? Uh, 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 wolves in sheep's clothing. And of course, we have that in the church today. We have it all over the church. We have heretics running rampant through the church. James Martin uh, and many, 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 many such heretics. Bishops who are heretics. Bishops who want to uh, legitimize intercommunion. Bishops who want to say it's okay for apostate politicians to receive communion. Bishops and priests who say it's okay that those indulging in same-sex relationships sexually intimate can still receive communion. Divorced and remarried without uh, still sexually intimate can receive communion. These are heresies of those who want to dismiss the reality of mortal sin in our faith. These are heretics who never talk about chastity uh, that anyone can come up, right? The, the Eucharist, the Eucharist is the sacrament of the sick, right? That anybody can come up all right, and receive the Eucharist. It doesn't matter. This is an abomination. This is sacrilege. This is heresy, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And we see it throughout the church, throughout the church. And Jesus is warning us today about these heretics, about these wolves in sheep's clothing, uh, these false prophets. Uh, and uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we can't be afraid to confront them. We need to confront them. Uh, and we need to uh, push back against them. And how do we push back against them? With the faith, with the fullness of truth that is our faith. Uh, to ask them simple questions. All right, what is a mortal sin? Does sexual intimacy outside of marriage constitute a mortal sin? And if they say, well, not in every circumstance, all right, then you can say you're a heretic, all right? That's it. You confront them, say you're a heretic. That's a heresy, all right? Um, and, um, uh, uh, and, and ask them simple questions like, um, uh, is, it, is it okay to reject certain aspects of the Catholic faith? Or are we to accept the deposit of faith, the fullness of truth in its unity and totality? And I will tell you, these people say, no, it's, it's okay according to conscience. No, that's a heresy, right? That's a heresy, right? And of course, uh, heresies are mortal sins. Uh, so my brothers and sisters in Christ, there's a lot to do, a lot to do, a lot to confront. Don't get discouraged. All discouragement is of the evil one. Uh, all uh, about Jesus is about encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. Uh, we cannot do anything apart from God, but with God all things are possible. Let us now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs for the Catholic Church, the Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious for our seminary, study for the priesthood, for those discerning religious life, but mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, that everyone in their vocation may desire to do all things in humble obedience for the praise, honor, and glory of God and atonement and reparation for our sins and charity and chastity in our vocations, we pray to the Lord for peace in the world, Eucharistic unity amongst all Christians, the conversion of the world, the conversion of nations, Conversion of political leaders, especially Catholic political leaders, to defy their faith. Conversion is necessary within the hierarchy of the church, the leadership of the pro-life movement. Uh, with our own daily personal conversions, for anyone that we've wounded or led astray in our lives, for anyone that's wounded us, that we be reconciled with everyone. 
uh, and uh, for the end of all the vicious attacks against life, marriage, and family, for the least of Christ, brethren, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, for all those suffering any trial or tribulation, whether it be physical or spiritual, that they may find comfort in Jesus as we reach out to them in spiritual and corporal works of mercy, we pray to the Lord. And for the particular intentions of this Mass, the intentions we hold in our hearts for your intentions, my intentions, and the intentions of all those who we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, for all of our family intentions, for the intentions of those, uh, for the souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them, in particular our deceased loved ones and family members, and our loved ones and family members away from the church, that they may embrace Christ's sacraments of mercy, we pray to the Lord. And we ask for this, we ask for all good things through the intercession of uh, St. Uh, John Fisher and Thomas More, bishops and martyrs, uh, uh, martyrs, uh, and St. Paulinus of Nola, bishop, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, uh, all in the name of, the, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, true goodness, ever receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted, to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, and the offerings we set upon this sacred altar on the feast day of blessed Paulinus of Nola, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name through Christ our Lord. Dominos Fabiscum, Sorsum Corda, Gracias Agimus, Domino Deo Nostro. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Paulinus of Nola, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fide.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the age may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For ipsum et con ipso et in ipso est tibi Deo Patri omnipotenti in unitate spiritu sancti omnas in all gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil grace you grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins from the faith of your church, and graciously grant their peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Pax Domino, sit semper fabiscum, agnus Dei. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord finds awake when he comes and knocks at the gate. Body of Christ. Oremos. Renew by your sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of blessed St. Paulinus of Nola, may strive to profess what he believed, practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there'll be no exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. As you can see, I'm in a hotel room. 
sorry for these Spartan surroundings, uh, but I'm on the road for life. And so going up to visit my family this weekend, uh, my granddaughter is, uh, yes, I uh, uh, have an adopted son who uh, took his own life eight years ago, those who follow me regularly, but I do have four grandchildren, three great-grandchildren. I'll be show, uh, seeing them this weekend, tomorrow night. My youngest granddaughter graduates high school and uh, then other family gatherings this weekend. But anyway, look at St. John Fisher, St. Thomas More, great examples of defenders of the faith. Uh, so we also, also memorialize them today. St. Uh, John Fisher, Thomas More, Paulinus of Nola, uh, great, great um, uh, 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 sheep, uh, I'm sorry, shepherds, right? Shepherds, uh, definitely not ravenous wolves, but shepherds. Uh, and of course, Fisher and Moore died for their faith. And so uh, great examples of what I was talking about today in terms of defending the faith against those heretics that are running rampant in the church today. So no exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. Please share this video, one share per group, one share per page. Invite your family and friends to join us each and every single day. Now, your final blessing. Dominos Rabiscum Benedicat Vos Omnipotent Deus Pater Filius Spiritus Sanctus Ita Misa S. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. We'll be doing the rosary later too, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So watch for that. I love you. Again, pray for me. I'll pray for you. Go out to the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.